Hello, this is Easy, and some people know me as Easy Brush. But anyway, uh, we're going to make a, a ring here, and it's going to have uh, eight holes, and it's going to be a ring for a finger. So let's get started. And we are in orthographic view. If you're not, go ahead and you need to select this icon here. Sometimes you have to click it twice. And we'll select the circle from center here. And click out like this. I'll make it large for the video here. And I'll click one time and it's going to give me an option to add some points or subtract some points. So I want to make 12 and we're going to go ahead and validate that. Now I'm going to be using real service here in a little bit. And for this to work, I'm going to have to cut this in half and I'll explain that here in just a little bit. So right click and drag over here. And what we're going to do is control X and control B. That way we have a left side and we have a right side. Go into object mode here. Control A on the keyboard. That way both of these are highlighted. Right click and we're going to group this to the root. Okay, let's go ahead and go into a top view mode here. Now this is going to be my main circle that's going to be going around the ring. So I'm going to go ahead and use the circle from center and drag out. And I want to have eight holes, so I need eight points. And we'll validate that. And we're going to select this little group here first. It's going to be the small little circles here, the two halves. Then we're going to go to utilities. Then we're going to use copy and support. And then we're going to select the uh, larger circle. Now let's go to a top view mode here. And you can see they're kind of, um, that's not the way I want them. Let's set it to number two and take a look. Okay, that's fine. And I do want to increase the scale of this a little bit. And they're kind of falling all the way around the circle, so that's what I want. Alright, we'll just go ahead and hide this right here. Control A. Select all this right here. This is what I started off with, and we'll delete it because we're not going to need that no more. Okay. <clears throat> Our next step, we're going to go over to the Surface Modeling tab, and we're going to use Ruled Surface. I got mine set up with a hotkey and um, with the letter R. So if you want to make yours with a certain hotkey, um, go ahead and do that. Because uh, we're going to be using the hotkey quite a bit because uh, I'll show you here why I'm going to use it quite a bit. It's because when we select this, let's go ahead and select the object. And we select the real surface. We're going to select this one here. Then we're going to select the next one over. Let's go to the wireframe mode here. And what we want to do is we don't want to go ahead and select another one because this is what will happen if we select here we don't want that so we'll have to select this again so each time that we spin around here and select it and when I'm done I'm just going to hit the R on the keyboard for my hotkey and then I'm going to uh, just move along this way and the thing not to do press R to finish off is don't come back here and start doing these ones in the back. Do them while they're facing towards you because what will happen is you will flip around the polygon. You'll have an inner and an outer and some of them will get switched around. So always have it facing towards you. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we're going to be adding some thickness later and uh, if these faces are not all facing the same directions, you will have a problem when you add thickness. Press R on the keyboard and R on the keyboard again and we're gonna work our way around this. R on the keyboard. We'll validate when we're done. Then we'll hide this group here. That was all the lines. And we're just gonna go to weld. And you can see all the little um, separate ones we got down here in the scene tree. And we'll select the A for group all. And now we got one. Now we can take this one here. And we don't 
need it anymore, so we'll delete it. Alright, I'm going to go on the next step, and before I do, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and save everything as I got it right here, and I'll be right back. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and activate the transparency down here. And this is going to allow me to select anything facing towards me and everything facing on the opposite side of me. So it would be the front and the back. That's why we select both sides. So, edge mode selected. Right click. And we'll drag over. Let's need this top row here. Activate the cemetery. Hold the control key. And just kind of bring up something like this a little bit. Back to edge mode. We'll deactivate the cemetery here. And uh, what we're going to do is go to the surface mounting tab. And we're going to add some thickness. Let's turn the transparency back off. And you can cycle through to see which one's going to be the better one. I think this one here is going to work. We'll validate that. Then um, when I subdivide it's going to be kind of too rounded and that's not what I want. So what I'll do is go into the face mode and I'm going to select the face here and in each side of these circles I'm going to hold the shift key and just keep on selecting just one face. And one here and I think I just got one on the other side. Just select that one and select over here. <clears throat> I over selected there. So all I got I believe is this one here. Then we're going to loop it. Loop it again. And everything should be all highlighted in all the circles here. And then we're going to go to the vertex modeling. And we're going to use this edge tool. The second one. And I'm going to be dragging really close inwards. Instead, this will make a nice hard edge that I'm going to let go here. If I was to drag way in here, the edges will be too rounded. So I want to get it really kind of close. Pretty close. So that's good there. Want to drop that there. And we're going to do it for the top too. So select here. Shift click the bottom one. Loop it. You just got to loop it twice. It's kind of basic. And we're going to repeat this for this up here. Alright. Now when I subdivide it, it should be fairly decent. And we get something like this. Okay, we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, I'm going to bump up the geometry a bit. We're going to select it number one. Then we're going to collapse the G here. And I'm going to go ahead and go to edge mode. And we're going to select an edge somewhere towards the top. And we're going to loop that. Control C, Control V. We'll hide this main ring here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the line tab here. And we're going to use this helix. And we're gonna make sure this uh, the, this uh, feedback is snapped the feedbacks on, and uh, we'll select here. All right. That way, when I make my first click here and I drag out, it's gonna kind of snap. I want it to snap kind of small, something like I guess like there. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the space bar twice. I drag click. So it's going to go in the, only in the Y direction. That moves up and down. And I'm going to try making this thing about as long as um, this circle here, if I was to have it stretched out. So I'll select here and click. And we're going to get an option to slice it. And we're going to bring this up. Let's go about, let's go about 60. And we're going to press Apply. 
and what we need to do is reduce the points it's got too many all right let's bring this down to let's say four we'll validate that all right in our next step make sure we're in object mode here let's go in the top view mode here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the uh, utilities and we're going to use this bend option now with this helix selected I'm going to select the bend then select here not all the time this is going to work right and you see it didn't work like I wanted to control Z that so what I'll just probably do is just take this one here grab a little arrow hold the shift key and snap it directly in kind of the same way that a uh, circle is going and we're going to do that again bend tool then we're going to select circle and we're going to get something like that now we can go ahead and delete that and we are going to go ahead and uh, bring this over here okay and what I did was when I bring it to the center I use a triangle here and I bring it close when I get close to the center I hold the shift key and it snaps both uh, center axes together and I'm gonna just gonna eyeball this for right now and I'm going to drag it up a little bit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to add some thickness so I can see it just a little bit better And you can see right here where the two ends did not weld. So let's go ahead and abort that. And what I'll do is I'll go to the vertex modeling and we'll use a target weld and select that one. Let's try this one other one here. Right click and drag all these two and weld them. Alright, now we'll add some thickness to that curve. kind of big um, see what I can do about that too much thickness let's do that again then you get something like that of course we'll subdivide this to make this look a little bit better all right I'm not gonna get really picky on this um, I kinda wanted it a little bit smaller but that's not gonna be a problem what I'll do is um, I could probably fix it later but I'm just gonna leave it alone just like it is I don't have to re-edit the video again I'll select the edge here Alright, and we're going to loop this. Control C, Control V. And we're going to add some thickness to that. Alright, we're going to bring this down just a little bit right there. This guy's slowing me down. I need to move the geometry off that it's getting too heavy select both of these here let's take a wireframe mode so we can see what's going on here select both of these control C control V and we'll bring these something down something like here We'll right click and group these. Select this one. Shift click that one. Right click and group. 
let's go ahead and control A all this and let's give it a little bit of subdivision level here. And you get something like this. Of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this ring up a little bit. Just about done. It's kind of jumping around. I mean, it's not looking too bad. Anyway, that's uh, one way that you can kind of make a ring here. I don't think my light maps are not working on this computer. So, I think this is going to wrap it up. I made one earlier and uh, I got a lot better on the uh, spring around it, but this will give you the general idea. I just thought I'd throw out you uh, another video tutorial with Hexagon. Anyway, and thank you very much.